Dear friends, do you know anything about active transport? What is the importance of active transport and especially the importance of active transport in the kidneys? So, I hope you know a lot of things, but still, at the end of this lecture, you will know some more things about active transport, especially the primary active transport. Now, basically, we have started the urine formation by kidneys and in the urine formation, we have started discussing tubular processing of glomerular filtrate. In our previous lectures, we have discussed in detail the filtration process. If you have not watched those lectures, you can watch them for proper understanding of urine formation. The first step the filtration step has been discussed in detail and now we are focusing on the tubular reabsorption we discussed in detail that when the urine formation in the kidneys begins initially there is filtration in the nephron there is filtration occurring in the uh, nephron and then as the filtrate moves along the nephron tubules different substances are reabsorbed that is the tubular reabsorption and that is the second step now we are now focusing on the reabsorption mechanism and the the in the last lecture, we discussed that the reabsorption may be through active transport or through passive transport. Then active transport is direct active transport or indirect active transport. So coming back to the point when the filtration occurs in the nephrons, filtration, when filtration occurs in the nephron at the glomerular capillaries, the filtrate moves in the nephron tubules. When, nef when the filtrate moves, some of the important substances which must not be excreted in the kidneys, they are reabsorbed in the peritubular capillaries. For example, glucose 100 gram per day is filtered and 180 gram per day is reabsorbed and 0% of glucose normally is excreted in the urine because glucose is important. On the other hand, creatinine 1.8 gram per day is filtered and 1.8 gram per day is excreted in the urine and 0% is reabsorbed. So, the kidneys are very intelligent, they know what to reabsorb and what not to reabsorb and that is the purpose of discussing uh, this chapter, that is the tubular reabsorption. So, now we will uh, focus on the primary active transport that how some of these substances, the glucose, bicarb, sodium, chloride, potassium, urea, how some of these substances are actively reabsorbed into the peritubular capillaries. They need some energy to be reabsorbed into the peritubular capillaries and that is the active transport. It simply means the movement of some ions against the concentration gradient and against the electrochemical gradient. Now, to understand the active transport, the primary active transport in detail, we will take into account the example of reabsorption of sodium. We will take the example of sodium. So a lot of substances are absorbed, rather reabsorbed from the tubular lumen into the peritubular capillaries. But to understand the primary active transport, we will here take example of sodium. Now, the, for the reabsorption of sodium, there is a transporter which uses ATP which uses ATP and it utilizes the ATP and it is known as sodium potassium ATPase. So the ATPase will basically break down an ATP and ATP is a substance which when broken down it generates energy. Now this ATP can be broken down with um, with sodium potassium ATPase or hydrogen potassium ATPase or calcium ATPase etc etc. But for the reabsorption of sodium from tubular lumen into the peritubular capillaries, we need sodium potassium ATPase. Now, because the, the concentration, because the concentration of sodium normally is uh, high uh, on one side and low on the other side, for example, the concentration of sodium on the tubular lumen is high on this side. It is 140 milli equivalent per liter and the concentration of sodium in the uh, cells, the tubular cells and the intercellular spaces is 12 milli equivalent per liter. Similarly, the, the charge the charge is basically negative, very negative on the cellular side, but in the lumen it is less. How this concentration difference and the charge difference is maintained, which basically favors the movement of sodium from tubular lumen into the uh, peritubular capillaries ultimately, before moving uh, through the luminar, uh, uh, luminal membrane and the basolateral membrane into the interstitial space and then into the peritubular capillaries. For all these things, the sodium potassium ATPase is very much important and that is the basis of active transport of sodium from tubular lumen into the peritubular capillaries. Now, coming to the point, initially a small amount of uh, a small amount of potassium for example is present here and a large amount of sodium present is here is present here in the uh, intercellular space or the interstitium. Now, this movement of sodium, this movement of sodium from this area to this area is done by force. It will not, now if we if we discuss the movement of sodium from this, this tubular lumen to the cellular region, it can move along its gradient because its concentration is high 140 and here it's 12. So it can naturally move by passive diffusion from the tubular lumen into the cells. But to move it out of outside the cells and 
to favor its reabsorption into the blood, we need to move it out of the cell forcefully. We need to move it out of the cell forcefully. And for that purpose, we need the ATPase, the sodium potassium ATPase. What it does is that it throws out sodium out of the cell. It throws out sodium out of the cell into the interstitial spaces or into the intercellular spaces. And for and in uh, return, it basically push down some potassium from outside, from outside the cell into the cell. So the sodium potassium ATPase by breaking down the ATPase gives sufficient energy to throw the sodium out. There is a protein and this ATPase is giving that uh, protein or the transporter enough energy to throw out sodium outside the cell. To throw out sodium outside the cell from into the interstitial spaces and into the intercellular spaces and it is pushing sodium from outside into the inside. So the purpose of this ATPase, this transporter is to actively to actively increase the concentration of sodium outside the cell and to increase the concentration of potassium inside the cell. And that's why it is the active transport and because it is directly involved with the sodium, so it is the primary active transport. Now, with the help of this movement of sodium, if there is movement of water or movement of some any other substance, that will not be the primary active transport, that will be secondary or indirect active transport. But here it is the primary active transport of sodium. Now, once the sodium is thrown out of the cell, the amount of sodium inside the cell decreases. The amount of cell inside the cell decreases and its concentration become 12 milli equivalent. As the concentration of sodium remain the same in the uh, in the tubular lumen, it, it remains around 140 milli equivalent. So there is, a, uh, there is a concentration gradient. There is a concentration gradient. Now, this concentration gradient allow the sodium to move uh, passively or uh, uh, to move without any force into the cells. Because the concentration of sodium in the cells has been decreased forcefully, so there is a room for this sodium, this sodium with higher concentration in the tubular lumen, with high concentration in the tubular lumen, to move into the interstitial spaces or in the intercellular spaces, especially this area between the cells, between the cells and the peritubular capillaries. So it moves here. It has some... Uh, now, the, the, the sodium potassium ATPase is basically throwing the sodium here. It is throwing it here and the sodium present here is basically moving uh, passively or it diffuses into the cells because the concentration of sodium in the cell inside the cells has been decreased and this these cells basically these cells are a uh, representation of this area uh, that is basically understood but to make it clear that this is basically representing this blood is basically representing the peritubular capillaries the cells are representing the cells of the uh, tubular lumen and uh, these these uh, projections basically show the brush border these brush borders basically uh, increase the surface area. They are increasing the surface area so that it 20 times increases the transport of sodium because it increases the surface area. And this area contains the sodium carrier proteins. Now, if you see, these are the sodium carrier proteins. These are the sodium carrier proteins. And these sodium carrier proteins basically help in the diffusion of sodium from this tubular lumen into the cells. Now, the, the, the sodium carrier proteins on the brush border basically allow the sodiums to move passively without force but that space the space the concentration difference that has been generated it has been generated actively and this sodium potassium ATPase they are mostly present on the basolateral membrane the basolateral membrane this is the basal membrane and this is the lateral membrane so the ATPase the sodium potassium ATPase which is breaking down the ATP is mostly present on the basolateral membrane and the sodium basically moves from the luminal membrane from the luminal membrane along the brush border into the cell and that's that's basically one thing the concentration gradient is one thing which favors the movement of sodium from a region with high concentration of sodium to a region with low concentration of sodium the second thing is the electrochemical gradient the electrochemical gradient because a lot of positive charge a lot of positive charge has been thrown out because a lot of positive charge has been thrown out of the cell. It has been thrown into the interstitial spaces. So there is a deficiency of positive charge and this cell, cell, cellular region, the cells become very, very negative, extremely negative as compared to the lumen. The luminal area is basically minus 3 millivolt and the cells has this minus 70 millivolt. So not only is the ATP is throwing out the sodium and not only is it generating the concentration gradient by bringing some difference in the concentration of sodium in the cell and outside the cell, but it is also throwing the uh, positive charge outside because it is throwing more sodium outside as compared to the amount of potassium it is bringing in because it is throwing three sodium out and bringing two potassium in. So more charge is going outside the cell and this region, the cells become very negative because more charge is going out of the cell. Now, this uh, this thing this thing generates an electrochemical gradient as well an electrochemical gradient 
the positive charge on the sodium is now pulling. It is being pulled toward this negative region. And the sodium basically moves passively by diffusion with the help of the sodium carrier proteins through the luminal membrane and through the brush border inside the cells. So the active transport of sodium involves the movement of sodium from the tubular lumen, from the tubular lumen into the interstitium along the concentration gradient due to the difference of sodium and potassium, sorry, due to the difference of sodium inside the cell and the tubular lumen. And it is also basically making an electrochemical gradient in which the charge on the, in the tubular lumen is high and the charge in the cell, inside the cell is very less. So more positive, positive charge is moving toward this negative charge. And all these, uh, these uh, basically gradients, these gradients are favoring the movement of sodium from the tubular lumen into the cells. And here in the cells, the ATPase is then throwing the sodium outside and generating space for more sodium to come in. So sodium is being filtered. It is continuously coming into the lumen and this ATPase is continuously throwing the sodium outside and uh, the sodium is basically uh, moving along, moving down the concentration gradient and electrochemical gradient. So from this region, from the tubular lumen into the cell, the movement is, the movement of uh, sodium is basically through passive diffusion along the sodium carrier proteins but along the basal and the lateral membrane the basal lateral membrane the movement of sodium from the cells from inside the cells out to outside the cells is by active transport once a lot of sodium has been generated uh, accumulated in this region now it is very really easy for the sodium to move from this region with high amount of sodium to the blood with small amount of sodium into the peritubular capillaries and this is with the help of ultra filtration or the bulk flow now, ultra filtration is due to the forces like colloid osmotic pressure and the hydrostatic pressure, which are due to the amount of different ions and proteins inside the blood and amount of ions and proteins in the interstitial spaces. To summarize, to summarize the active transport, the primary active transport of sodium, there are few important terms to remember. The concentration gradient, the electrochemical gradient, luminal membrane, basolateral membrane, ultra filtration, brush border and sodium carrier proteins. Now. Sodium is being filtered uh, from the uh, glomerular capillaries into the uh, Bowman's capsule. Now this sodium enters the proximal tubule and this basically this sodium, the sodium is entering into these cells. The sodium is entering from the lumen into these cells because inside the cells, the sodium amount of sodium is less. Why the amount of sodium is less? Because there are some pumps which are using energy by breaking down the ATP, the sodium potassium ATPase and that energy is being used for throwing out the sodium from the cells to into inside the interstitium or the intercellular spaces. So the amount of cells in the so amount of sodium in the cells is less and the amount of sodium in the tubular lumen is high, which makes a concentration gradient. And along the concentration gradient, with the help of the sodium carrier proteins, sodium moves passively from the tubular lumen into the cells. But when sodium potassium ATPase is throwing out sodium, it also throws out the positive charge. So the charge on the inside the cell decreases to minus 70 millivolt and the charge outside uh, the cells in the tubular lumen is minus 3 millivolt. So there is a movement of sodium along the electrochemical gradient as well. So basically the sodium movement from the tubular lumen into the cells is passively along the brush border. The brush border is basically the, uh, the extension of the uh, luminal membrane. It is the extension of the luminal membrane on which the sodium carrier proteins are present, which favors the passive movement of sodium from this region from this region into the cells, from this region into the cells here. And now this movement, this movement from the cells into the interstitium is with the help of ATPase. And this movement is basically along the baso, basal membrane and the lateral membrane, the basolateral membrane. Once a lot of sodium has been accumulated in this region, then uh, sodium can move from the interstitium into the blood. I've repeated these things uh, repeatedly so that you understand it. And uh, if you understand it, uh, there is no reason to watch the full video. You can then stop it and go ahead. But for those who uh, uh, want to understand it, it, it in detail, I keep on repeating things so that their concepts get cleared. And basically, these are the uh, different steps I have tried my best to explain. If you still do not understand, you can watch this video once, uh, once more and you will understand it clearly. Thanks a lot for watching the video.